Good evening everyone, this is Bell's Books and this week I am bringing you some information on the Nancy Drew series written by the pseudonym Carolyn Keene. I'll bring you some publication information, some interesting little facts about the books and the latest auction prices for some of them week ending January 10th, 2021. Okay, so to jump right in, most people know the Nancy Drew series as being Grosset and Dunlap editions. But with the publication of volume 54, The Triple Hoax, in 1979, the rights to the series was changed to Simon & Schuster. So they were printed in paperback in Simon & Schuster's. Uh, a little fact I'll tell you later, but Grosse and Dunlap also did print volumes 57 through 64, uh, Captive Witness, which was published in 81, but there's a reason for that. Okay, so in 1979, the imprint of the Simon & Schuster books were changed to Minstrel, and volumes 57 through 78 had the Minstrel imprint. Then later, volumes 164, The Mystery of Mother Wolf, published in 2002, through volumes 175, Werewolf in Winter Wonderland, published 2003, had the Aladdin imprint. Now, the 1979 through the 1985 books were called the Wanderer books. They were printed in hardback and paperback, but the hardbacks were mostly sent to libraries, so they're very scarce and difficult to find, especially with a dust jacket. They'll mostly be ex-libraries. So, volumes 57 through 78 were published in very, very limited runs. Volume 76, The Eskimo Secret, which was published in 85, through volume 77, The Bluebeard Room, published in 85, are among the hardest to find. And volume 7, The Phantom of Venice, is, albeit admittedly, the most scarce and difficult to find, especially, again, in hardback. So, some of the reasons with the publication change was because of legal disputes. In 1980, Harriet Adams switched publishers to Simon & Schuster because she didn't like the lack of creative control that she had at her last agency, uh, especially when it came to the Hardy Boys' 50th anniversary in 77. So Gross and Dunlap filed suit against them, Simon & Schuster, calling breach of contract, copyright infringement, and unfair competition. So, of course, Harriet Adams filed a countersuit saying, you know, their lawsuit was in poor taste and frivolous and that she was the author. Well, when Mildred Benson was called to testify, that was shown to be untrue, that she was not the original owner. So the court ruled that Grosset had the rights to publish the original series as they were in print in 1980, but they didn't own the characters or trademarks. And furthermore, any new publishers chosen by Adams were completely within their rights to print new titles. So there was a lot of controversy behind the Nancy Drew books. Of course, everyone knows they were ghost writers, a multitude of authors who came together and wrote these books. So, we are going to jump right into the auction prices. The first book I'm going to talk about is Volume 11. This is The Clue in the Broken Locket. It was published in 1934. It was valued between $500 and $750. Now this particular book sold for $875. Now this edition will have the blue cover with the orange silhouette on the front, orange gem papers, four of the glossy illustrations, and there won't be any symbol on the spine. Um, these books were actually also made with very good paper, which is because in 1942 all the books had started being printed with very poor quality of paper that almost immediately turned the books like a yellow ochre or a brown. Okay, so we'll go on to the second book. This is volume 22, The Clue in the Crumbling Wall. This was published in 1945. This particular book has a value of $1,500 to $2,000. Now this book actually sold under the mark. It sold at $900. Uh, in that case, the, the owner probably accepted a best offer. But this particular edition has a blue cover, orange front silhouette, and end papers. And this uh, also has a symbol on the spine. 
Okay, now we'll go into number three. The third book is volume 27. It is The Secret of the Wooden Lady, published in 1950. Now this particular edition has an estimated value between $500 and $800. Again, this one sold under the mark, but it sold for $300. That's, a, that's nice money for a book. This one, of course, has a blue cover, blue silhouette, and black on the right of the cover. Um, and she'll be looking down towards the left. Now this one has the blue silhouette end papers and the plain paper illustrations. It also has a cameo style on the spine. Um, some scattered volumes also will have the maroon Dana Girls end papers, but that's because they used them because the Dana Girls had gone out of print, basically. By 1949, the publishers also went back to the quality paper, um, which is, of course, with this edition. So it also has the wraparound dust jacket. A little fact about this book also is this is the only one of the first four printings that shows Ned Nickerson with a cigarette in his left hand. So I thought that was really cute. Okay, so we'll go to the fourth book. This is volume 21, The Secret in the Old Attic. This was published in 1944. This book has an estimated value between $15,000 and $25,000. This book sold for $35,000. Now this is a very coveted book because it's the first in the series. I mean less than seven copies in really good condition exist with the original dust jacket. I mean there are no more known. It's the most valuable and the scarcest. And in this book originally Nancy Drew is 16 years old um, and the ages later changed in the, in the later editions to her being 18. And in this edition, Hannah Grun is also depicted as just a mere household servant, which in the later editions, as we all know, she's changed into the much beloved, almost family member. So we will also go, oh, and another fact, this edition also ranked 53rd on the publisher's weekly list of all-time best-selling hardcover children's books in English. Yes, that's a real title, but it sold 2.7 million copies as of 2001. Um, it's also readily distinguishable because this edition was published with a white spine dust jacket and there's no silhouette on the back front cover. It has blank end pages and then four glossy black and white illustrations. Okay, let's go on to book five. That is volume 14, The Whispering Statue. This was published in 1937, and I actually don't have an estimated value for some of these books, so I'll just give you the price that they sold for. And this book sold for $937.50. Now this book has that blue canvas cover with the orange silhouette on the cover and end papers. It also has a dust jacket with a white spine and the orange silhouette end papers and four glossy black and white illustrations. Okay, so we'll go on to book six, which is volume 18, The Mystery at the Moss Covered Mansion. This book was published in 1941, and the sold price for this book is $875. Uh, this edition just has a plain paper front space illustration with no additional illustrations. It has the blue boards with the orange silhouette on the front and end papers. Okay, and the next book is Volume 8, Nancy's Mysterious Letter. This book was published in 1932, and this book sold for a nice $1,314.50. Now this has the blue cloth boards with no silhouette in the center of the front cover. It has blank end papers and four glossy black and white illustration. Uh, one of the glossy illustration will appear before the title page and then the rest are scattered throughout the, throughout the book. Uh, this dust jacket has the white spine with no spine symbol. Okay, the next book is volume 23. This is the clue in the broken locket. This book was published, excuse me, in 1934 
and sold for $508. This edition is published in the same style as the previous book with a blue cloth and no silhouette in the front. Uh, the first glossy illustration will also appear before the title page in this edition. Uh, interesting fact is that Edward Stratemeyer only paid his ghostwriters $125 for these novels that were written, all under the pseudonym of Carolyn Keene, and then he retained all the rights to the books. So that was quite a coup. Okay, the next book is Volume 19, The Quest of the Missing Map. This book was published in 1942, and this book also sold for $508. Now this edition has the blue cover and the orange silhouette in the center of the cover. It has the orange silhouette end papers, but the front piece is a plain paper illustration. It's not a glossy. So there are also no other illustrations in this book. The dust jacket has a white spine, with a blue symbol at the center of the spine. Okay, let's go on to the next book. That would be volume 25, The Ghost of Blackwood Hall. This book was published in 1948, and it sold recently for $3,884. Um, now I've just got to admit, this book that sold isn't the first edition published in 1948. This book is a third edition. This is incredibly overpriced. I I have to admit, it does have Mildred Burt's autograph, but for that kind of money it should have come with the author too, to be honest. Um, okay, that's just my opinion, sorry. Okay, the next book we'll go on to is actually a set of five Nancy Drew books. The collection of five sold for $2,032. This set included volume 17, The Mystery of the Brass Bound Trunk, published in 1940, Volume 9, The Sign of the Twisted Candles, published 1933. A uh, Volume 6, The Secret of the Brigate Farm, that was published in 1931. Volume 15, The Haunted Bridge, published in 1937. And Volume 7, The Clue in the Diary, that was published, of course, 1932. Um, these are, of course, all sold without dust jackets, which is probably what drove the price down. And of course, they're all the Mildred Burt, Russell Tandy books. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, like many of you, I'm having to do this from home, so it could be better. But bear with me, it will get better. Uh, and I never say this in front of the video. This always annoyed me. But if you like this, please support the channel. Give me a like, a subscribe. So I know that this is something you actually are interested in and enjoyed. And thank you so much.